welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a tag video and I saw my friend Makeup and Travel do this video on YouTube so I'll go ahead and link her video down below. And this video was created by Bad to the Brow and I've actually connected with her on Instagram. Her name is Millie. She is so sweet and we were talking about the Pat McGrath foundation actually and I believe she got it through Influencer and she had done a review so I had to watch it of course so I could hear her thoughts on the foundation but anyway thank you to Makeup and Travel for doing this so I saw her tag and thanks to Millie for creating an awesome tag video so without further ado let's get into the indie makeup tag and of course if you want to do this I'll leave all the questions down in the description box so you can film this video as well let me know through Instagram or YouTube if you film this I would love to watch and leave you guys a comment so anyway first question what does indie mean to you in terms of handmade private labeled and independently owned. I think indie to me definitely means independently owned. The whole thing behind indie is that it's not being funded by like a huge corporation. As far as handmade, I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me if it's handmade or machine made. I know some brands still are using hand press to make their shadows. I know Luxie just switched from handmade to machine made and I think it's actually helping their quality uh, because I found with my shadows that I had purchased from Luxie there's a lot of crumbling so I'm glad that they switched and then as far as private labeled that one I think is my least favorite because private label makes me think of brands like Morphe crown where you just go to the manufacturer and you pick out a palette and then slap your own like I could go to a Morphe type place and be like okay I want the Karen Harris palette and I would just pick out like shades that already existed and kind of rearrange it I think is how that one works correct me if I'm wrong but yeah so that's kind of what I feel about all those terms number two what are your top three favorite indie brands who okay favorite indie brands I have to say Sydney Grace because their shadows are amazing like the consistency and the quality of Sydney Grace shadows are just getting better and better and better like they were not bad to begin with so it's just amazing like their latest stuff that they sent for their Christmas in July sale I was just like I was literally talking to Heather on Instagram and I'm like uh like what kind of magic are you putting in these freaking eyeshadows because they're amazing like they're buttery you don't have to wet them you don't need a glitter glue like so good so so good so I love Sydney Grace the most my next favorite I want to say is colored rain because again their foiled formula is so buttery even their mattes everything everything is good so so good I don't use my colored rain shadows enough i depotted my queen of hearts palette and two of their mini palettes that they came out with a few years ago um so now i have them in z palettes but i'm always buying more shadows so i never get around to like playing with those but they're so so good when i first got them when i first got the queen of hearts palette like oh god it was like it is one of my favorite palettes still to this day i just wanted to depot it so i could get them all in one spot my last favorite Oh, indie brand Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place has been consistent and around for so so long and they're just killing it. I'm so happy that their brand is progressing. They're in Alta stores now which means more people have access to them and I just remember when I first heard about Juvia's Place I heard about them from coffee break with Danny this is before anyone was talking about them and they only had two palettes they had the Nubian and the Nubian 2 the colorful one I have it it's over there somewhere and those are the only two and I was like whoa like she had the colorful palette and I was like whoa that's gorgeous but it was sold out so I bought the neutral one and as soon as the colorful one was in stock I bought it and it's just been like a snowball effect ever since like they've been coming out with great things more people are talking about them so I'm so so happy for that brand and so those are my top three favorite indie brands right now number three which indie brands have disappointed you and why Ooh. okay so biggest disappointment was sugar pill because everyone raves about the sugar pill shadows 
I don't know if I got a bad batch, but my sugar pill shadows are so patchy. They're so like, they're just, they suck. They're dry. They're expensive. So all I did with my sugar pill palette was a swatch party video. And then every time I try to use it, I hate it. They just launched those four new shades that they were like raving about. Uh, they finally launched those and I want them because I love that green shade. I think it's called Arsenic. But I'm like, Karen, like you don't even use the ones you have. So I decided to save my coin. Um, but yeah, Sugar Pill was definitely one of my biggest disappointments as far as the indie brands go. I would not recommend you picking up those shadows. If you want to buy one, I would suggest a small, like a six pan, or just buy like one and try it out. And then if you think it's worth the hype, go and get the big pro palette. But oh my god, they're... Ugh. So disappointed. Uh, next disappointment, I think for me, was Strobe. Only because of the creepy cute palette. Like, I couldn't get it to really work on my skin tone. Like, I can't get the shade in the pan to show up on my eyes. I think it's because of my skin tone. I've tr I want to try it with a white base because I just got the Makeup Revolution white base. And so I'm curious to see how it goes with that. But I feel like for the hype that Strobe gets, I don't know that they necessarily live up to it. And then my last indie brand that I don't necessarily love that kind of disappointed me was Menagerie. And that's because I didn't really love the Dragon Child palette. It was a little too smoky for me, so I got rid of it. And then the Feral palette, I don't, I don't know what it is about her formula. I don't know if I just don't like how thick the shimmers are. They're very hard to like pick up and get on your eye personally is what I think but I did buy the Oceanic palette and I haven't tried it yet so I'm gonna give Menagerie one more chance and try it because that was such a beautiful color story um and then they came out with that violet ink palette which also looked gorgeous and I was so so tempted to buy it but I was like Karen like just you have the Oceanic you haven't even used that one yet so don't buy more if you hate it then you're gonna be stuck with two palettes that you don't like again so just wait so I did talk myself out of it but I'm hoping Menagerie can redeem themselves for me question number four which indie brands have you not tried yet that you really want to try Ooh. okay so I really want to try the Nomad Cosmetics Harajuku palette it looks so fun the only thing is I'm not sure if that's gonna work with my skin tone so I'm you know holding off because I'm trying not to buy everything. Uh, but I love the color story and that last row looks amazing. I really want to try M Cosmetics because of those new serum blushes they came out with. I was never really interested in them. I'd heard Hannah Louise Poston talk about their cloud lipsticks. Cloud lip paint lipsticks or whatever. Their liquid lipsticks. So I really want to try that. And I really want to try these serum blushes. But by the time I decided to try them it was all sold out on their site so i cannot try them at this moment i want to try the be perfect cosmetics x stacy marie xl pro palette it just looks so fun and colorful i don't know if i'll actually splurge though to get it it's about 42 pounds and it's a uk based brand so not really sure i also really really want to try cosette eyeshadows I remember makeup struggles talking about them and their shimmers look really really stunning but they're really pricey so I don't have any plans on trying them out anytime soon but those are some of the indie brands I want to try I'm sure I could sit here and think of more if I spent more time researching it but I feel like my year for trying brands was really 2016 2017 I bought a lot of eyeshadow palettes from a lot of different brands that I hadn't really even heard of especially because I was influenced by Angelica but now my budget is like pretty much non-existent on stuff like that I'm trying to be a little more conscious because I spent way too much money on eyeshadows the past few years and even the past few months I'm trying to be better so even though there's brands I want to try I'm, or things I want to try or palettes I want to try I'm trying to tell myself like make sure you've featured everything you already have in your collection before you try to get more so that's that's the plan for right now okay number five if you could own an entire product collection from one brand what brand would it be this one for me right now is so easy I really really want the entire collection from Cleonaud their multi-chrome collection is epic it's 55 eyeshadows and they're so pricey. I just bought the jeweled set. I think I bought like six eyeshadows and they were like a hundred and something plus dollars. 
and I was just like, oh, it hurts. But it was such a beautiful collection, and so I thought I'd start with the jeweled. I would love to try some of their glitters, and they have a few other options as far as formulas go, so I would just love to own that entire collection. I think what, if you had all the shadows, it'd probably be around $500, but yeah, it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Number six, what unique product and or concept have indie companies bought to the table that big brands have not? Honestly, right now I think the multi-chrome trend is so huge that it's going to trickle over to the bigger brands, but right now I think the indies are kind of owning that shit. So yeah, it'll be fun to see it when it hits the mainstream, but I think they're really owning multi-chromes right now. Um, lots of really, really beautiful multi-chrome eyeshadows coming out. Number seven, what are your three favorite products that you own from indie brands? Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. I can do this. So I love like all of my Sydney Grace eyeshadows. So it's really just gonna be eyeshadows for me. I love my Sydney Grace eyeshadows. Let me see here. Where are my Sydney Grace palettes? As I'm sure you can imagine. Okay, so these are my two Sydney Grace, like my two main Sydney Grace eyeshadow palettes. I love their shadows. Like, uh, if I had to pick, I would really just show you guys this one shade right here. I think this is the shade. Is it called Tempest? I believe this one is called Tempest. And you guys, I don't know names of eyeshadows. Yeah, this is Tempest. But this one I know. And Megalodon. Oh my god. These two eyeshadows from Sydney Grace are stunning. So I love their eyeshadows the most. And then I love their cream shadows too. So that's my favorite. And then I love my colored rain. So these are some palettes that I depotted from Color Drain, as well as their matte shadows. I still need to try this yellow, um, because is it um, Teresa's Dead that says this is the best yellow? So I need to try it, but their foils are amazing too. We had a few casualties when we depotted, but again, so slick and gorgeous. Clearly, you guys know I like the blue-green, so here's some swatches of that. Okay, and then my other favorite indie brand or like makeup item is the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions palette. That is like one of my favorite green palettes. The formula is amazing. It's soft. It blends the shadows. The shimmers are buttery and gorgeous. So I really love that palette, as you can tell. Okay, so those are my three favorite products. Number eight, if you could collaborate with one indie brand, which one would it be and what would you create? I think I would love to collaborate with Sydney Grace. Um, they're one of the indie brands I've had a lot of interaction with. The owner is so kind and sweet and she is always like, when I thank her for sending me something, she always says like, I love your channel. I just want to do whatever I can to help you grow and that's so sweet of her to do that because she definitely doesn't have to like there's so many other people that would you know take free product as well so the fact that she believes in me means a lot and I just feel like from the vibe they put out they're a very family oriented like company they're not trying to be the next like you know pump out product pump out product kind of brand they're more concerned about curating their line and just putting out amazing products. So I think just having a brand like that be behind me, I think is so amazing. So I would love to collaborate with Sydney Grace and I just think it would be fun if we could do like complexion products, you know, for different skin tones, even though I feel like they already do a good job of curating things for multiple skin tones. They're so cool. And if you haven't checked them out yet, you definitely need to. Number nine, what is one thing you wish indie brands did more? I don't know what I wish indie brands did more of. I think the ones that I really like, I feel like they do a really good job. They try to cast as wide a net. They try to, you know, get smaller influencers involved so that they can kind of build up their brand while the influencer is building up their audience. So I feel like there's a lot of good things that indie makeup companies do. The only thing I can think of is like what I wish they wouldn't do and it's people that get into makeup and the business side of things just because they see how well other companies are doing in this industry. I definitely feel like there are quite a few brands out there like that that they're in it for the money because they see how well 
companies can do. You send out a little product and all of a sudden you're like the next big thing. So I can see people getting into it for the wrong reasons. I'm sure there's like an initial investment involved in any type of, you know, business venture, but you know, some people just have a lot of money to spend or they have investors or they don't mind taking out a loan to see if they can, you know, turn it into something bigger. So I think definitely I just hope that every brand out there is getting into it for the right reasons. There's a lot of brands, you know, I see it's like their first palette and I'm like, whoa, like they have all these influencers talking about them, but they only have one product behind them. It kind of definitely like raises, you know, a question in my mind of like, oh are they in it because they love makeup or because they see all these brand owners like morphe for example like really skyrocketing into the billionaires club so that's the one thing i would think of is like even as an influencer as an influencer um i always want to be conscious of like is this brand you know reputable did they just crop up overnight sometimes that happens and sometimes it works don't get me wrong i'm sure there's people that are just starting out and it's for all the right reasons but i think that definitely is a question that needs to be asked in our community so yeah that's what i think about that okay that is basically it i went through all nine questions and i hope you guys enjoyed this video Hopefully it wasn't too long or too boring for you guys, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one soon. Bye guys.